In today's episode, we're sharing a presentation from MaxLawCon 2022. Keep listening to hear Brooke Lively as we share her talk, From Panic to Profit. You can also head to the Maximum Lawyer YouTube channel to watch the full video. Let's get to it. Run your law firm the right way. The right way. This is the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Your hosts, Jim Hacking and Tyson Mutrix. Let's partner up and maximize your firm. Welcome to the show. In 2015, I fired my biggest client. He was 94.3% of my business. And I lost money every month for the next 26 months. I fired an employee. I encouraged a full-time employee to go part-time, and I worried about making payroll. I maxed out two lines of credit. I did a cash-out refi on my house and took out every possible penny. I maxed out all my credit cards. And when I maxed them out, I got more, because, you know, that's what you do. And I'll never forget getting my last one or applying for the last one, and I got it. It was a whopping $900 limit. And I waited every day for it to come. And when it did finally arrive, I waited until 11 o'clock at night because I was so embarrassed about what I was about to do. And I drove to the other side of town and I went to an ATM and I took a cash advance for every dollar I could get. And then the next morning, let me tell you, I was at the door of the bank when it opened so I could deposit that money so I could make payroll. I was scared. I was petrified, in fact. And I asked myself questions that some of you may have asked yourselves. Can my business survive? What if this doesn't work? And it was when I was sitting in that ATM line and I was taking that cash advance that I realized I'm a fraud. I own a fractional CFO company. We help make law firms become more profitable. And I wasn't profitable. And then the next morning, when I go to the bank, and I'm sliding that stack of $20 bills across the counter to the teller, I wondered, can she tell that my business is on the brink? And the big question was, on the brink of what? And I realized during that that I needed to hire myself, that I needed to do for my company what we do for so many other companies. So now, we are consistently hiring, and I don't worry about making payroll. Now, instead of worrying if a credit card charge is gonna go through, I'm completely out of debt. And now, instead of wondering if my business is going to survive, I am confident in the decisions we're making, and I know we are going to continue to grow and be more profitable. So what I want to do, I've got about 15 minutes. I want to teach you what I did for us and what we do for clients. And here's the thing. We call it the rule of thirds. One third of your revenue goes to pay your people. One third of revenue goes to overhead and one third of revenue goes to profit. Sounds pretty easy, a little harder to implement than you think. So let's dig in and look at the first third and that's people. And when we talk about people, that includes you, that includes your salary in that third. And, you know, this is the place where so often attorneys overspend. When we first see them, they're spending 70, sometimes even 80% of their revenue on their payroll and their people. And I know that everybody always tells you that you need to pay the market rate in your area when it comes to salaries. I believe that you should create compensation packages that are customized for your firm. And the question I always get is, hey, Brooke, that sounds great, but how do I do it? So let's talk about how we do it. I think you guys have probably seen this. We're going to go over it really fast. Three types of attorneys, the finders, the minders, the grinders. Grinders' job is to grind out work. 
Minders are a little more grown up attorneys. They actually have skills. They can help other people. And then the finders, a lot of you are the finders. It's your job to go out and find new clients. The grinders should have a 5X multiple on what they cost. So that means that if they are all in, salary, taxes, 401k, any other benefits you give, $100,000 a year, they should be billing and collecting $500,000 a year for you, okay? And then the minders are at 4X and the finders are at 3X. So we had a client that was, I'm gonna go back to this one. We have a client who was doing this. She had come to us. We have what we call the profit finder. And we run the profit finder on our clients every few months and it does exactly what it says. It finds more profit in your law firm. And you all are attorneys. You went to law school because, you know, you were promised no numbers, right? You have one math formula, one third of any number. That's the one formula they taught you, right? So she came to us. She was spending way over 35%. We ran the profit finder. So we've got to cut the salaries. We've got to change the way your people are being paid. So we did that. And we revamped a couple of her comp packages. We got people in line and she was still over. And we're like, hmm, what is it? Well, we realized that she needed more accountability in her firm. And here's what accountability looks like. Accountability helps you move work through your firm. And that's how you get paid, right? By completing work, whether you're flat fee, PI, or hourly, you have to move work through your firm. And she wasn't doing enough. So she needed to give everybody a goal. I don't care what your goal is. It can be hours. It can be a specific activity, like sending out a demand package. It can be points. So we had a client out in the Pacific Northwest, and he's like, I don't have one activity that moves cases through. I have a lot. And we said, fine. So we assigned every activity a point value, and then we assigned everybody a point goal. I don't care what it is. Everybody needs a goal. The second point is discussions. Assigning a goal is great, but if you're not sitting down with your billable people every single week and having a discussion that goes something like, did you make your goal or not make your goal last week? Why did you make your goal? Why didn't you make your goal? And then what are you going to do next week to do better? The third part of accountability is discipline. We talk to a lot of law firms, and one of the things we've heard as from the employees is that their owners go to events like this, they get all these great ideas, they come home, they say, we're gonna do this. And after two, three weeks, max two months, they kind of forget about it. So employees have learned that they can outlast any new idea you have. You have to have the discipline to keep on this to have those weekly meetings. You have to have the discipline to hold them to their goals. Now, there is a second part of discipline, and that's consequences. If you have a goal and there is no consequence for missing it week after week after week, it's useless. Now, we know this works. We taught Heather this. Heather did it. Her production went up 40%, four zero. Do you know how much extra that cost her? Zero. It all went into her pocket. And we know it works because four years later, her production is still that high. All right, so let's talk about some things that you can do to help you make your people more profitable. The first is calculate the multiples on all your people on all your billable people. Are your grinders getting 5X? Are your minders getting 4X? The second thing is give everybody a goal. It's simple, it's easy. All right, let's talk about the next topic. That's overhead. So I mentioned the profit finder that we used with Heather and we use it with a lot of our clients and we do it, you know, kind of periodically. 
And when we designed the Profit Finder, we took overhead and divided it into two buckets, marketing and everything else. And we did this because marketing seems to be the place where all reason goes out the window, right? So you should be spending between 5 and 10% of your revenue on marketing. You got that? 5 to 10%. When we first see clients, it's way over that. So we have a, have a, had a client named Sam, and he came to us and he wasn't spending 10%. He wasn't spending double that. He was spending something closer to triple. And we said, okay, we need to cut your digital marketing budget by $10,000 a month. Now, when we start saying we're going to cut your marketing budget, people are like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And Sam went, <laughs> what are you talking about? We said, we've done the research. We've done the math. This is what we're going to do. And so he said, all right, I trust you guys. We cut the digital marketing budget by $10,000. And do you know what happened? Nothing. He had the same number of clients coming in that he did before. The same number of sales calls, the same conversion rate, the same everything, except that now he had an extra $10,000 a month to plow back into the firm or an extra $120,000 a month that he could put in his pocket and take home. The question I usually get is, okay, Brooke, how did you do this? So we looked at the return on investment of his marketing. Here's what you do. You take all your revenue, you divide it by all your marketing expenses, and you get a multiple. And then once you've done this, get a little more advanced. Divide your revenue by the marketing channel. Divide your marketing expense by the marketing channel so that you can say, this was pay-per-click revenue, and this was pay-per-click expense. Every month, cut the lowest performing channel or campaign. All right, let's talk about everything else, right? These are the four places where we see firms overspending on overhead. I'm not going to go through them all. The one I actually want to talk about is coaching. This is kind of a touchy subject here in this room, right? But coaching. I've had clients come to me and say, oh my gosh, that coach was the best thing I ever did. He saved my marriage, and the expense of hiring him was way less than a divorce. Yeah, it was. But let's be realistic. Who's benefiting from that? Is it you or the firm? It's definitely him. And that's fine. You can still run it through your firm. I don't care. But let's acknowledge it as owner benefit because that's who's benefiting. And then the second thing about coaching is what's your ROI? I was having a sales call with someone and she had coaching and we went through it. And she's like, so worth it, so worth it, so worth it, so worth it. My revenue's up $200,000. I'm like, uh huh. Your revenue's up, but what's your profit doing? When you are looking at the ROI of your coaching, you want to take your increase in profit and divide that by the cost of coaching. And when I say cost of coaching, I'm just talk, not just talking about the coaching cost. I'm talking about the travel, the hotels. Some people would even say the opportunity cost of not billing. All right, what's your ROI? Is it positive? Okay. Two things you can do. Calculate the ROI of your marketing. Do it every month. Cut the lowest one. And the second one's easy. We didn't really talk about this, but recurring expenses. Pull your credit card statement and go through it. What's on there that you've forgotten about? You know, kind of like that gym membership you got in 2007 and you haven't been since January 2007. You're still getting charged $19.95 a month. Take a look. Okay. Let's go look at the third, third profit. This is the one that ultimately, as a CFO, I care about the most. And really, as owners, it should be the one that impacts you the most. Every month that goes by without fixing your profitability problem is another month you will continue to face cash crunches. 
every month that goes by without fixing your profitability problem is another month your family doesn't have everything it needs. And every month that goes by without fixing your profitability problems delays your ability to retire or sell your law firm. And that one really gets me. Okay, I think you guys know this. If you don't, this is the math formula behind your P&L, your profit and loss statement. Revenue minus expenses equals profit. This is the number we're talking about. Now, when we designed the profit finder, we said, you don't just take home all the profit. You got to divide it up. Three buckets. The first bucket is taxes. Look, we all know the IRS is going to get their pound of flesh. So you might as well, every month, go ahead and take that money and sequester it somewhere else. Okay? The second bucket is a war chest. And the third bucket are your distributions. And how much do you put in each place? We usually start at about half and half, and then we go from there. But I want to talk about your distributions. As the owner of the law firm, you should be properly compensated for the time, the effort, and the risk you are taking on to own this law firm. However, one of the phenomenons we see a lot is that when firms start to hit that million dollar mark, the owners are like, oh my God, I'm finally making money. And they take every penny out, every single penny. And we call this starving the firm. And I understand why it happens. Those owners have probably financed this firm on their personal credit cards. They haven't taken a vacation in a long time. They're driving a car that really needs to be replaced. I get that. It's all deferred spending. I totally understand it. But the problem is, is that it stops your firm from growing. So you don't want to take 100% of profit as distributions. The number that ultimately we care about the most for the clients we work with is owner comp compensation. And I want you to realize there's a difference between profit and owner compensation. Okay? Profit. You know what that is. We've talked about that. You know what a distribution is. Your owner's comp comes from three places. It's your salary, it's your distributions, and it's all that personal crap you run through the office. Like, I know you do it. We all do it. I don't care as long as your CPA is good with it. Not any of my business. Now, if you are over a million dollars in revenue, your total owner comp should be 35%. If you are 250,000 and below, it should be 70%. And it's a sliding scale in between, all right? If you have more questions about that, I can answer them later. So things you can do for your profit. First of all, monitor your profit. Look at it every month. Is it going up? Is it going down? And does it meet your needs? And the second one is just figure out your owner comp. Are you getting the percentage you should be? So one of the most common questions I get is, you know, hey, Brooke, this sounds great, but can you help me get control of my numbers? And yes, we can. And the first step is at the end of this, I'm going to put up a QR code. And I'm going to give you access to the profit finder that we use with our clients. OK? And what this does is it shows you where you're overspending and where you're underspending, and it gives you a plan to fix it. And what this means is that you have more money in your firm and more money at home. All right. I want you to picture a day when you have excess cash in your firm and also at home. I want you to picture a day when your accountant calls and says, I've never seen such a profitable law firm. I want you to picture a day when you look forward to going to the office because you've got the law firm of your dreams. So whether you are struggling to pay your bills, are finally profitable, or even if you've been profitable for a while, the Profit Finder does exactly what it says. It helps you find more profit in your firm. 
All right, I want to leave you with one last thing. You deserve a profitable firm that grows every month. You deserve a profitable firm that pays you enough money to live the life you want to live. You deserve a profitable firm that creates incredible jobs that benefit all of your employees because you deserve a profitable firm. Thanks for listening to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Maximum Lawyer Podcast. To stay in contact with your host and to access more content, more content. go to MaximumLawyer.com. MaximumLawyer.com. Have a great week and catch you next time.